On Friday, 24th of October, the fourth payment under the Guyana-Norway partnership was finalized following continued fulfillment of core objectives of the partnership in climate and forests. This follows three previous payments that have been made for performance under the agreement for years 2009, when 30 million was earned, 2010, which saw 40 million being recorded, 2011, which recorded a payment level of 45 million, and year 2012, for which 35 million was announced on Friday. This brings the total earnings by Ghana under the agreement to US 150 million. The assessment of performance for the reporting year 2013 is currently being finalized and would likely see maintained levels of payment for forest carbon services coming to Ghana under the agreement. Performance under the Ghana Norway agreement is measured largely on the maintenance of forests and an accompanying low rate of deforestation which are contingent on strong and effective forest governance, sustainable forest management, and high levels of forest legality and chain of custody. The large majority of forest areas are in classes of state forest area, state lands, and protected areas. Approximately 15.9 million hectares of total forest in Guyana of the 18.5 million hectares are in these classes with the first two accounting for the majority of forest area. The remainder falls on the Amerindian lands. Over the past six years, the maintenance of forests for timber harvesting and management of forests for mineral extraction have been taking place over the area of state forests of close to 12.2 million hectares. With management of this vast expanse with extraction and utilization for timber and mineral ongoing, there has been a maintained low rate of deforestation of 0.02% to 0.08% over the past 23 years. This achievement cannot be made in isolation of strong legislation, policy and guidelines for the natural resources sector. More precisely, this maintained rate of low deforestation is testimony to the effective forest policy legislative and governance framework which exists in Guyana. One of the main focal areas of the Guyana Forestry Commission work has been in forest law enforcement and legality. For example, Guyana is currently engaged in negotiations with the European Union on a voluntary partnership agreement under the EU's forest law enforcement governance and trade program. This engagement has seen further opening up of Guyana's forest management system to international scrutiny and the further strengthening forest governance and legality in the sector. As a precursor to the EU program, the forest sector has already over the past three years concluded three audits under the independent forest monitoring program. The results of these audits have concluded over 90% compliance of all indicators and this further support by illegal login rates of just zero for the past three years. At the forest sector level, there are several key guiding policies and documents, including the Code of Practice for Harvesting Operations, National Forest Policy, Forest Management and Annual Plan Guidelines, Manual of for Procedures for Exploratory Permits, Field Procedures and Manuals for Forest Inventory and Silviculture, along with other important resources. These help to ensure the sustainable forest management is effectively implemented at a concession and management unit level. A maintained low rate of deforestation is also seen at a time when gold prices have been bringing tremendous income to the country and with even increase in declared production and investment in the mining sector. Maintaining 99% of forest cover still remains an achievable goal and a reality in the natural resources sector. Further, the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission, which regulates the mining sector, has also advanced work in developing and implementing codes of practices in mining. These codes include those relating to avoiding environmental degradation from mining. Also, the GGMC is currently revising code of practices, such as the use of mercury and waste water management. To complement these efforts, there has also been development on the operational end, such as the improvement of technology and mining practices are very important to shift miners away from the use of mercury 
and also to improve recovery efficiency in mining operations. New, new technologies such as centrifuge systems can also increase recovery rates in mines from moving it from 30% to 80% when compared to traditional practices. This means that the mine need only to be worked once, after which it can be closed and the forest restored, as we have started in some areas. Inefficient traditional practices encourage sites to be reworked a number of times, thus not allowing the forest an opportunity to recover. We are already seeing the impact of these efforts with a low deforestation rate reported for 2030. Interim results in 2013 deforestation rate indicate a decrease in the rate of deforestation from 0.079% as the annual rate for 2012 to 0.068% as the reported rate for 2013. Total deforestation is just about 12,000 hectares for 2013. The main reason for this decrease in deforestation is on the account of a decrease in deforestation from mining activities, which dropped to il just about 11,487 hectares from the 2012 total of in excess of 13,600 hectares, a decline of 2,177 hectares. Our sector de deforestation continues to be at a very low level of just about 330 hectares and justifies the assertion that forest harvest has had and continues to have a very low impact of deforestation. The rate of deforestation for Guyana over the past 23 years has remained fairly stable between the range of 0.02% and 0.08% and stands to compare quite favorably with the global average deforestation rate computed across 85 developing forested countries as reported by the FAO, which is recorded at 0.52%. This rate also compares very favorably with Guyana's reference level as agreed on the Norway Bilateral Agreement on Forest and Climate, which is set at 0.275%, computed as the mean between Guyana's historic rate of 0.03% and the global rate of 0. 5.2%.